Hey, Ming Tsai here with Simply Ming. Today, I have a fantastic chef from Cambridge, William Colville. He has two great restaurants, one called Catalyst and Catalyst Cafe. He's got a fantastic pedigree, worked all around the world. Started in San Francisco as Jardinet with my buddy, Tracy Desjardins. He's worked at Radios with Michael Schlau. He's worked in London. Today, he's gonna be cooking pork, a big old thick pork chop, oven roasted with some carrots, broccoli rabe, and a cider jus. That's why it's called a pan sauce. Literally, you're making the sauce from the pan. I'm gonna take pork as well, pound it out, make a tonkatsu on house rice and a Worcestershire aioli. Traditionally, tonkatsu in Japan, they would have this kind of Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna make my version of the Worcestershire aioli. We're cooking pork right now, right here on Simply Me. Great to have you here. Man, great to see you. Thanks for being in my house. Um, so as tradition has it, we're gonna make a quick cocktail and then we get to cook a whole bunch of pork chops, right? Sounds like a Dude, great I'm plan. I'm so psyched to have you here. Uh, this is a apple spritzer that we actually use some charred uh, vermouth, but we soaked it with charred oranges and give it this great orange uh, flavor. So if you don't mind, can you fill these with some Absolutely. ice? Absolutely. So how's Cal is going? It's going well, yeah. it's. Uh... We're in a busy time for the restaurant. It's, it's a large restaurant, dude, yeah, right? How have, many seats? We have a capacity for 300. That's fantastic, dude. Is that enough ice? Yeah. Uh, no, go a little more. A little more? So, right. equal parts of, of apple and then the, the white vermouth. That's it. Such a simple drink. This is a really light drink. You know, the spritzer was created back in the 1800s in Padua, um, Italy. And the idea was people wanted to drink, but have something a little bit lighter, right? So, both of these um, have much less alcohol content than, um, than other spirits. So because it's lightness, and by s topping with some sparkling water, uh, it gives you a great little flavor. And as you know, it's an aperitivo, right? It's great yes. to help for your digestion. Um, it's an old Italian trick, right? If you have a little upset stomach, they always say, we'll just have a little Aperol. But this has just a little bit of extra with the charred orange remove. Great way to start the day. It is. Just top it off. Actually, I love this Mexican sparkling water. So good, so bubbly. I get that pretty little drink like this. Oh, beautiful. Let me give it a quick little stir because we want to taste everything together. There we go. And all right, chef. To you. Thank you. Chin chin, buddy. Nice to have you here. Cheers. That's great. Pretty light, right? Yes. All right, ready to cook some pork? Very, very All right. much. Come on, chef. Let's do this. All right, chef, what's your dish, please? All right, today we're going to make pork chops, roasted pork chops, yeah. with broccoli rabe, carrots, and a cider jus. Awesome. All right. All right. Can I do any prep for you? Yeah, so we're going to start off, we can start off with the broccoli rabe. Okay. We just want to cut it down. So I love broccoli rabe when we roast it. It gets nice. Just show nice me what and you want, and I'll do the rest. Nice and crusty. So some of the stems are bigger. So take about an, like an inch off the bottom. Okay. And then just you can cut it just in half a little bit, and that okay. will separate. So why broccoli rabe? Right. I mean, there's tons of veg out there. Why yeah, is this so one of your faves? What, so my wife and I love broccoli rabe at home. So when we when we roast it in the oven on, on a 400 degree oven, the right. leaves get crispy. It gets crunchy. It's right. a little different texture than just steamed, cleaned. Broccoli. I love it. And and just so good for you, right? Yeah. I mean, so good. All, and all veg is so good for you. Yeah. All right, here. Go all right. Can, so I'll we've do got that. beautiful pork chops. Um, when you when you make when you go to the store and you buy a pork chop, make sure you buy three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. Um, Why is that? Just because I think they they cook better, they're more consistent, they won't dry out as much. Awesome. So I I'm, love. I mean, I love broccoli. All you said it. Broccoli is fine. This has. I like the bitterness. Right? Yeah. It has it has a it. much more complex flavor. So I'm just seasoning with salt and pepper. And by the way, if you can get naturally raised pork, organic would be the best. It's more expensive, but it's not that much more expensive these days, right? It or, isn't. Organic used to be three times more expensive. Now it's like 30% more. By a little bit more expensive and right. the end quality as a result. So I'm just going to. Yep. So up here. It's cranked up for you. All right. So canola oil. Canola right? oil. You wouldn't use olive, right? Because it'll no, smoke too it'll much. No, smoke too much. Right. All right, get those going, chef. Finish my prep over you hear here. It steams up. 
Love it. Medium high heat. And how long are you gonna sear those for? So those will be about two two minutes on each side. We'll get a nice color, nice golden brown. Okay. On each side. While that's going, I'm gonna start the carrots. So we're just beautiful baby carrots here. Throw the rob in here? Uh, yep, throw the rob in there. Okay. Just gonna cut these in half. The goal is to try to make everything about the same size so it roasts about the same time. Yep. And we'll pull it all out of the oven and everything is done. Uh, can I do anything else? Yep, you can cut these in half. Okay, perfect. And we'll put a little bit of olive oil uh, in this and just toss this up. Awesome. Put it in there. I love how simple this is. It's, it's literally, you know, one pot cooking or so, a two pot if you have a... It's a weeknight staple at our house. It's awesome. And you have three, three children, right? Three children. I have a daughter who's seven and identical twin boys are four. So you're not busy at all. No, I'm not busy at all. <laughs> and the two restaurants, so we've got a lot going on. I can imagine. Uh, season this up for you, Yeah, sure? season it up. Okay. We're gonna add a, a little bit of um, salt, pepper, and just a touch of chili flake. Okay. My wife and I like a little bit of spice. Nice. You don't have to use chili flake, you can use another um, pepper if you like, Aleppo pepper is really popular now. And right, yeah, I love Aleppo. So like one, one good pinch? Yes. Got a nice nice color here. These are actually beautiful, nice. almost uh, pork T-bones. You have a piece of the pork tenderloin and a, uh, the loin. What else can we do? So oil, salt, pepper, chili flake. And we're good to go. Awesome. I'm gonna okay. give this about another minute. Get Perfect. Caramelization on there. And we have, uh, Chef, I put this sheet tray in. You okay. wanted to preheat it. Tell me about this trick. So I like to do this at home. I'll get a, a sheet tray nice and hot. So when I do put the vegetables down on the uh, pan, I start that caramelization process immediately. So it starts to get some color. Dump away. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Uh, you, hear that? you can hear the sizzle. I love that. Yeah. Make sure it's a nice even layer when you do put it down so everything cooks. All right, perfect. Are right, those porks good to go? Yeah, porks are good to go. All right, let's go in the oven here. All right, you first, Chef. All right. Fantastic. Beautiful. All right. Perfect. How long is that going to be now? So I would probably do about seven to nine minutes, depending on the size of the pork chops. Okay. Uh, the same with the vegetables. So, what temp are you looking for? So about 130 to 135 right. uh, is where you want to cook. There has not been a case of trichinosis in America for over 50 years. Yes. Right? So that used to be the pork disease. It just doesn't exist anymore. So please don't cook your pork all the way through because it gets dry and then it's it chewy and it's like cardboard. Yes. All right, so we're gonna come back in seven minutes. We're gonna do a little prep looks like here. Then we get to eat some pork chops. Yes. Beautiful. All right. Beautiful. All right, chef, it's been what, about 11 minutes? 11 minutes. How do you think? They look That's great, good, yeah. Right? Oh yeah, Perfect. good. Got your veg. Over. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Just let them rest. Resting okay. is a really important. Explain that, please. Yeah, so when- Because they're not tired. They're more than tired, right? When, when meat comes out of the oven, yep. uh, it's tense, it's tight. Uh, you want it, uh, a time for the, the juices to reabsorb. When you rest a, a piece of meat, it's more tender than right out of the oven. So 100%. If, you ate, if you cut into this pork chop right now, it'd be chewy and it, would be, it wouldn't taste yeah. very good. Let me turn this flame on. So Nick, you're All gonna right. make a pan, pan sauce? Pan sauce. And yeah, I'm gonna do the uh, French right. trick. I, yeah. You know about the French trick. Either put flour on the handle or put a towel over it because you and I, you grab that handle, you just burned yourself and you yes. have to. But have some this is the basis. So, this fond or the stuff that's left right. over from roasting is our basis of our sauce here. Okay, so you got so that. So, I'm gonna cut some shallots up real quick and you're gonna peel some apples. And you can use any kind of apple. Granny Smith is great because it's a great right. uh, baking apple. Love it. Yeah. And you, need, you can do a rough chop on the shallots. Okay. I'm gonna just throw these in here. Give you that apple, chef. All right, I love this. This is a classic pan sauce, right? This is, I mean, when you were, you learned this from Tracy or you learned just, just classic French technique, right? Just, yeah, this is just classic French technique. And I'm just gonna get this translucent. I don't want any, a lot of color on that. As, that, as that's doing, I'm going to pick a little bit of time. And we got this unfiltered cider. Um, I'm a big fan of cider, always have. I love this country's type cider, because in France they have it as well, right? It, yes. It's, it's, you can tell it's a, you know, it's a little bit cloudy. It's not too sweet. It's got a great mouthfeel. And it, ta it tastes like the terroir, right? We talk about that with wines, right? You can taste the land. You can taste more of the actual flavor. All right, so I'm going to throw the apples in here. Okay. Apple. Beautiful. Get you 
you some more here. So, <coughs> smells good. And then, so we don't really want to cook the apples to applesauce. We just want to get the rawness out of them. Right. Because we do have a, a really a rich piece of meat in the pork. So right. what we're doing is adding acidity from the apples to kind of break that fattiness up from the pork. Love it. We say it all the time, Chef, right? It's about balance of flavor. Acid to sweet, crunchy and smooth. All right, a little bit more good? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm just going to pick a couple pieces of thyme. I love thyme. Oh, those are good apples. Those are nice and tart. Do you have enough apples? I do. Okay. Perfect. I love it. See, I would imagine not using all that butter, but you are going to feel oh, some butter. It, yeah. Love it. But I always say I have a, a, a saying in the restaurant, when in doubt, butter it out. It makes, every, it makes everything better. Uh, and, I see a t-shirt. Yeah. When in doubt, butter, butter it out. out. Oh, my God. I'll give you credit, my friend. Don't worry. I'll say it say by WK. What else do you know? Cider. Cider, okay. yeah. There you go. So anytime you add alcohol to any right. blame, just want to be careful. This is a very low alcohol right. cider, so just trying to be mindful of that. Yeah. I, if it was rum. Yeah. It could, it could hit you. So again, I want to repeat what Chef was talking about. The font, F-O-N-T. The font is what's all the good juice of the part that gets stuck to the pan. You have to get that stuff off because that's all your flavor. That's why it's called a pan sauce. Literally, you're making the sauce from the pan. That's right on. good, yep. So I add a touch of honey. Okay. The honey will actually thicken it up. Interesting. And that, what honey is this? It's this is the wildflower honey. Okay, local, right? Local wildflower honey. Which, yeah. by the way, and I know a lot about allergies because my son used to have a bunch. If you eat local honey, that helps actually for your allergies because those bees are taking the pollen that's local and that can actually help your allergies during the hay fever season. Eat yeah. local. You should also eat local, period, because it takes less gas, a lean energy to get it to your table. What you're looking for is about halfway down. You can see that there's not a lot of liquid here. Yep. Um, but you still have a little bit of sauce. Now I'm going to start to add a little bit of butter. All right, that looks good. Chef, just do you want chai batons or chopped chives? Uh, just chopped chives. Okay. And what I do is I'll turn off the heat because I don't really want to cook, and I'll just kind of swirl the pan. It smells so good. All right, so can I lay the, the veg down on Absolutely. The, the plate? Absolutely. All right. To just scatter it around, Chef? Mm-hmm. Oh, look kind of feel how crispy yeah. that is? That's, that's the genius of broccoli yeah. raw, right? Yeah. It has to add some nice texture instead of adding like a fried shallot at the end like we do in restaurants or right. a garnish. We have it all built in here. And it's it. two pans. It's great for a weeknight. Beautiful. Okay. Get those pieces of meat down. So you can see these these pork chops are nice and rested. Yep. And see, and this juice that you're gonna lose some. So people, some people are like, oh, look at all the juice you lost. You would have lost all the juice if you sliced it when it was hot. Yeah. Right. Love it. This dish looks so good, chef. Oh god. That looks incredible. So I kind of thought about this dish. Um, my wife, you know, when we make pork at home, I could make it with, you know, spicy noodles, and she would still whip out one of the kids' apple sauces and put it on there. So <laughs> it's always pork and apples. So well, we make this quite a bit. Of, that's like the mint jelly and lamb yeah, for the Brits, right? Yeah. Uh, chives? Absolutely. A couple of chives are on top. Dude, fantastic. Unfortunately, we can't eat it now. If you don't mind, I'm going to make my pork dish. Then we get to eat. All right. Great Sounds dish, good. Chef. That's a good dish. <laughs> chef, that dish looked awesome. Thank you. I cannot wait to get into that. So I'm doing a pork tonkatsu, which uh, I'm using actually tenderloin. Now I'm going to pound it out and panier it, right? Get a nice panko crust. Um, it's going to be on a house rice with some furikake and some caramelized onions. So if you can bang those onions out, just cut them this way, we'll get those caramelizing. Okay. And I'll start on my pork here. So usually you want a, a large scallopini type. So what I'm gonna do is cut it 
one way, cut it this way, and then I'm going to pound it, right? So there's one piece like that. Okay. And tonkatsu in Japan always served on a bowl of rice. Sometimes it's um, chicken, usually it's pork, right? Usually it's a lot of gravy. And what we're going to do now is take one piece, lay it between parchment like that, and then pound it flat. Good for getting your frustration out, right? Yeah. Right, so there we have one. And this is just to make the, the cutlet even. Yeah, so make it, it nice and even so okay. it cooks evenly. Let's do that again. I always say if you can play squash, quack the ball as hard as you want, you can get the frustration out. Almost. No way to really do this quietly, so. But you want like that, nice and thin. Chef, throw, throw this in the All pan right. for me here. I'll throw a little olive oil. This is Kraniki olive oil from uh, Greece, which I love. This is just one of the most delicious and healthy olive oils. Okay. All right. So we're going to go nice and slow. As you know, Chef, maybe 15 minutes about to caramelize. I will put a little bit of seasoning in it. Okay. Salt and pepper. Awesome. So now, with our pork, what we're gonna do. Hey, Chef, do me a favor. Will you yep. like, scramble those eggs for me? Absolutely. So classic panier technique is flour, eggs, and then panko, right? This works great with chicken breast. This works great with fish. It works with anything you wanna have a nice coating on. Key, of course, is season, because pork doesn't come seasoned. So salt and pepper, and as you know, chef, season both sides, right? Absolutely. Because you don't want to season hard on one side. It's better to spread the flavor out. In this sense, it doesn't quite matter because it's so thin, but it's just smart to season both. Guarantees every bite is delicious. All right, so then what you do is you lay it in the flour. The flour then prepares it for the egg to stick to the flour. And usually you use one hand, because you want to keep your other hand clean. Then this then goes into the panko. So I'm going to do the second one. This you can do in advance if you're actually doing a party or something. You can get these, you can get your cutlets all coated. And then when you want to cook it, you can just take it out of your fridge and then cook it. So here's my first, first one. You want to get a good panko coating on both sides. All right, so there's one. And here's cutlet two. Shed, pour a little of this extra virgin olive oil. Yeah, there you go. Give me about a quarter inch. We're gonna to go to not super high heat, because again, olive oil will burn. So we're gonna let this come to temp. So chef, you can just drop a panko. See that little sizzle, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's good. Again, I don't want to, I don't want it too hot. There we go, that's perfect. There's one, there's two. Oh yeah, baby. All right, chef, we're looking good. These onions are gonna take about 10 more minutes probably, right? Get a nice caramelization. This is gonna probably be about three or four minutes aside. Okay. We come back, we get the plate up. Each get a pork tonkatsu. Stick around. All right, Chef, look, two and a half minutes. G, B, and D. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah, baby. That's what we're talking about. The onions are coming along nicely. Perfect. We're going to make a little aioli here. So traditionally, tokatsu in Japan, they would have this kind of Worcestershire sauce. I'm going to make my version of Worcestershire aioli. So minced garlic, couple egg yolks, little salt, little pepper, and Worcestershire. Some people say Worcestershire, which I don't think is right. Then, and this, when you make an aioli, usually, or mayonnaise, you put the oil in really slowly. I used to do it at Fauchon in Paris, and I would have a huge mixer, and it would take like two hours. With a hand mixer, you can put the oil in, and usually it's four or five to one ratio of oil to your liquid. It could be a wine, it could be a vinegar. And I discovered that 
if you actually start it on the egg and go, the egg's on the bottom, and then slowly lift it up, it emulsifies for you pretty quickly. See that? Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Is there an oil you like to use for aioli? I, I love olive oil. I like the flavor of olive oil. I mean, look at that. Yeah. Perfect. A lot yeah. of time saved. That's how you can make a house mayonnaise. Just a couple eggs, pick your favorite oil. If you want garlic and stuff, you can do it. There we go. Let's give this a quick try. Not bad. A little more salt. A little more of that. All right, chef. We can plate up. Let's okay. do this. Do me a favor if you don't mind. Grab your onions. Yeah, grab those onions. What we're going to do is we have house rice here. Let me go ahead and grab my tonkatsu because you want to get these out. These are perfectly cooked now. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at these. Oh, that, that looks like money. All right. So now we're going to take house rice. This is house rice. I call it 50-50 brown and white, which is what we have here. I soaked the brown rice for an hour first. Okay. Right? Let it catch up because, as you know, it takes more water. Then I mix them together and then cook them together. All right, chef. Let's cover those with caramelized onions for me. Smell delicious. Very nice. Beautiful. We have some furikake, which is a house made. We do this at Blue Dragon. It is garlic chips with sesame seed, togarashi, and toasted seaweed called yakinori. All right? We have our two beautiful. All right, chef. Here we go. Tonkatsu one, tonkatsu two. A little Worcestershire aioli. Let's put a big old dollop like that. I don't know if this is going to be as good as your dish, Chef, but it's going to be a good second. Oh, it looks fantastic. All right, a little more for a cocky. All right, Chef. Grab yours. We get to eat pork two ways. Right, let's do it. Let's go. Provence to Thanks, you. Chef. Cheers. Grenache primarily, a little senso. Dude, can you please serve me your dish? Absolutely. It looks so good. Love it. Thank you very much. Bon appetit. I hope you enjoy. Oh my God. That is delicious. That is superb, dude. The broccoli, Rob, is spectacular, right? The crispiness. But I love how you made the apples with apple cider, right? With Cesar Brew. Perfectly cooked pork chops. You don't brine, right? I do not brine, no. It takes time, right? It takes 24 hours, the whole nine yards. All right. Okay. Get this it in is again. delicious. Do you like it? Is yeah. it okay? You sure? Yeah, like the aioli say? is great with the pork, the onions, everything. The rice is gorgeous. It's just better. <laughs> Chef, you obviously know how to cook. Maybe next time, have you in my kitchen, we'll do some steak. Because I think that's what you like to cook the moist, you said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I raise a glass to you. As we're showing, thank you. Thank you. Go to Catalyst next time you're in Boston. Chef, thank you so much. Pleasure. Love, love cooking with you. And love all you for watching. Thank you. And as always, peace and good evening. Cheers.